What's happening, everyone? Jay Shockblast here, and check it out. This weekend, thanks to the folks at 2K and Gearbox, and because I am a 2K next maker, I have the opportunity to check out Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, and I have to say, I am so excited for this game to come out. It will be out on March 25th, and uh, that can't come soon enough because this little demo I got to play really kind of wet my appetite and just made me want to get out and start streaming it uh, to the point where I accidentally almost clicked go live. <laughs> um, this The gameplay you're seeing is some of my gameplay as a Stabomancer, and I'll talk a little bit more about my experience playing the game in just a moment. But before we get into that, I want to talk about Borderlands as a whole and how it is one of the most important gaming franchises to me of all time. If you've followed the channel over the years, you've seen me play the game a little bit here and there. Uh, it's obviously never been a major focus for me, but it has always been one of my biggest offline games. Um, I try to get as much content as I can for it. I know I'm not really known for it, but I can't even begin to tell you how much stuff I have, right? I've got the, the big clap traps and the gentleman clap trap from the pre-sequel and you know, I've got all oh, everything. I got little loot boxes, the ultimate loot box, the diamond loot box, butt stallion, masks, you know, Funko Pops, figures, everything. All right. This is this is really important to me. So to be able to play and experience this game uh, a little bit early uh, really felt good. And I, I really appreciate it. And it's because of all of you and all your support over the years that I got to do something like this. Um, so now that we've kind of gotten my fandom for Borderlands out of the way, you know that I have a lot of experience with this and I, I know what I'm getting into. And Tiny Tina, for those of you who don't know, is one of the quirkiest characters uh, in all of the Borderlands universe. Uh, she had her own DLC in Borderlands 2, which was recently released as kind of a standalone to kind of get people ready for this. It's just a $10 you know, standalone version of the DLC uh, that actually was a PlayStation Plus, uh, you know, game one month. So uh, you really get the chance to understand what we're doing. So Tiny Tina is, is a child at the time of that DLC coming out, and she's having a hard time coping with loss. You know, Roland dies in the game, and she doesn't know how to handle it. And to do so, she makes everybody play a board game called Bunkers and Badasses with her. And uh, the long story short, that's actually a game that they, they end up turning into an actual tabletop game and put up on Kickstarter that I have, by the way, uh, because like I said, I'm a fan. Um, so this is essentially you know, what we're in for. This is Dungeons and Dragons inspired. This is game night, this is tabletop gaming. You got 20 sided die, you've got orcs and goblins and and you know, like just all sorts of creatures. It's got that pre you know medieval feel to it and flair. So it's not just Borderlands, but because we've all played these games, we know what to feel and what to expect. And when I load into this game, I feel like I'm in a Borderlands game. And that's not like a bad thing. Like, I mean, I feel like you kind of have to be that way and expect that if you're going to play a game within the, the Borderlands universe. It should feel like Borderlands. But this is Tiny Tina, and this is the overworld. And uh, this is a lot different. All the, the chests are, are different. They look a little bit more medieval. And even the, the vending machines... Uh, have a new look. They are kind of got this stained glass look to them. So the the whole atmosphere is really cool. And you've got the they're playing a game. This is not you know you going through everything. This is Tiny Tina as the dungeon master, narrating and dictating you know the terms of their board game or whatever it is. However you you know what is it real live role playing <laughs> i don't know um role playing basically you know this is what we're doing with with tiny tina's wonderlands and it's really cool i love it i love the banter ashley birch is fantastic um you know i've always loved tina as a character you know talking about their badonk -a donk and you know just all the crazy things that she says it's it's a fun character and to have her kind of shine for an entire game is going to be really cool. I ran into some familiar faces. Uh, you know, ran into Claptrap. You do a, a really fun quest with him. 
and he's on his A game too, you know. So listen, you're gonna be in for lots of jokes, even more than usual. And you know, you're gonna have your Dungeons and Dragons style quests and you know, Tina's gonna talk about game night and, and all these little things they're gonna interject because it's not just the game you're playing. You're not in a world, it's not you know, like, you know, Mordecai and Lilith and Brick and Roland saving the world the first time around. This is them playing a game together. And it's really cool, you know, how it, how it kind of all comes together. So I um, I got to play as both the Graveborn and the Stabomancer. So I want to, like, read you what the descriptions are for each character and then talk about them. The Graveborn is a death-touched acolyte who sacrifices health to unleash devastating dark magic attacks and become the phantasmal reaper of bones accompanied by their manic demi lich companion and then there's the stabomancer uh, is a sneaky critical hit focused assassin who can summon magic whirling blades to the battlefield and disappear into the shadows at will now what i had were kind of pre-built uh you know characters because you know, they can't just send the whole game for this that's not ready to, to do that. You know, this is just a demo. One little level, one little area uh, that was called Mount Craw. Uh, kind of a wintry, icy area with caves of fire and lava and, and all sorts of beasts to match. Uh, lots of goblins, some uh, some shark-inspired uh, <laughs> enemies. It was, it was pretty cool, man. Like, there's just a really cool vibe in all the different characters that you fight. Uh, the quest fit that medieval style Dungeons and Dragons, um, you know, feel. Uh, I want to talk about the Graveborn. Not my style. Uh, I thought I would really like the Graveborn. I usually like having having that summon character. Mordecai is my favorite character. I like Axton, the little turret, and then there's uh, oh gosh, I'm blanking for Borderlands Three, uh, the Beastmaster, um, Flap. Flack, Flack, uh, Flack. Those, those are my three main characters, you know. Um, and even uh, the the in the pre sequel, which I is the only game I don't have like every achievement in. Um, there was the the guy with the little turret or drones and everything, who is like a, a villain in the the second game. I, I'm blanking. It's late as I record this, um, but uh, you know. Like, these are the style of character I play. So the Lich, I did like. Um, but what I didn't love is there's, like, this... The other power that I had, and I, maybe as you progress through the game and you're able to kind of craft your character a little bit more, I could have changed it. But there's, like, this big, massive melee attack where it comes crashing down, and it, it takes some of your health. And at first, I was taken aback. I didn't know that that was what was supposed to happen. I thought I was just doing it wrong. Uh, so I just stopped using it, you know? Um, but there's some really cool powers. I I, I can see myself playing it. Um, but I just really enjoyed the Stabomancer, okay? Stabomancer had a lot of melee abilities. And I didn't really get to go invisible or anything like that. So I don't know if I was doing something wrong. But I did get to use that you know whirling blade and uh, that attack is great for doing some like area of effect damage and then the salamancer also had like this big bomb like there's like this fireball that rains from the sky a little tough to control but again you know i was not like getting the whole hand holding effect i was just kind of thrust in i think it was like a level nine or ten uh when i started the demo so like we're obviously a little bit into the game at this point and gone through all the tutorials. You know, I didn't have access to any of the customization stuff, but I can tell you that as I was defeating enemies, they were dropping different, like, visuals, like, different, like, skins or, like, you know, shirt dye or banner art uh, or stuff like that. So that was actually really cool. Something that I love about Borderlands is the looter aspect. And boy, oh boy, is there lots of loot. I mean, the guns are just a little bit different. I was using this pistol that almost felt like it was uh, like a crossbow, and it shot really cool. I'm not usually a pistol guy in these games, but it was my favorite gun to use on, on both characters. Um, all the guns are not your traditional Borderlands-style guns. You know, we don't have Jacobs and Torg and, and any of those, but there are different 
um, different vendors in this world, and uh, I thought that was pretty cool too. So uh, I really can't wait for people to get their their opportunity to get this game because it's it's a lot of fun. Uh, Claptrap's quest was really fun that I got to do. Uh, Claptrap looks very Dungeons and Dragons in this game. He's got some uh, you know pretty cool pretty cool effects. He looks like he's made of wood and stuff like that. So uh, just honestly, uh, it's everything I could have hoped it would be, and I I just can't wait to get my hands on the full game because there's definitely a lot of cool stuff going on and and I, I really appreciate the opportunity to try this out I really think that if you're a Borderlands fan you're already going to be getting this game like it's not even a question um, but for those of you that haven't played Borderlands this is a really good opportunity to get in on something that's a little bit different um, especially if you're into you know RPGs and stuff like that like you know you're I guess everybody's playing Elden Ring right now this is you know the Borderlands style Elden Ring without you know having to to brag about how great you are at video games you know it's, it's fun it's what video games are supposed to be and that's what I love about it and I'm not a big you know Magic the Gathering type or Dungeons and Dragons and stuff like that but I've seen it and I appreciate it and I love that aspect to it you know that it, it's just I could kind of talk in circles at this point, um, and I hope you've enjoyed the gameplay in the background. It's probably nothing spectacular. It is me kind of learning. I'm the type of person that has to look and search for everything, which is great because in this game, there's lots of stuff to look for. There's like 20 side die uh, throughout the level where if you actually find one, you know, you click on it and you're rolling a die and whatever it lands on, uh, you're going to get gear that matches that type of roll you know so obviously you want to roll a 20 and if you roll a 20 i'm sure you get some legendary or something like that and if you roll a zero you probably have to fight something i didn't do either i kind of was like in the middle on most of my rolls um but you know i got some cool gear and and uh, the gear is definitely cool there's like a dedicated melee weapon you know there's gun slots i mean this game is going to have everything that you expect it's going to have you know, some co-ops, you can have four people playing or three other people with you. And I'm really looking forward to that. I, I honestly think that this is going to be a game that I can just load up and play and have people join me. And that's what I'm looking forward to the most um, because Borderlands is just such a, a fun looter. And I think that this is just amplified with Tiny Tina's Wonderland. Um, I don't know really what else there is to say. It's just... Like, this is... I just want to say that I enjoyed my time with it. And I think you will, too. And uh, I think that's really the core of what I want anybody to take from this video. That if you're a fan of Borderlands, you're you're going to have a good time. You know what to expect because you know who Tiny Tina is. And hopefully, you had a chance to play Assault on Dragon Keep. Um, it's not totally what ha what's happening there, but it's the same vibe. You know, I didn't get to see much of other characters, you know. I know that there's going to be some form of butt stallion in this game, and I don't know if you know we're going to hear from Lilith or or any of those other characters. I haven't didn't get to see any of that. This is a pretty straightforward um, you know mission. We're we're saving the goblins of the GTFO. <laughs> um, I'll I'll let you experience that yourself. Um, but uh, yeah, it just it's cool. It's a really cool. I'm, I'm so excited for this game. March 25th is when it's coming. Definitely, definitely you should consider it uh, March 25th. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I hope you enjoyed a little bit of my gameplay. Nothing spectacular. Uh, but it was me. And I enjoyed it. We'll see you.